You're listening to the Doc Lounge Podcast. This is a place for candid conversations with healthcare industry's top physicians, executives, and thought leaders. This podcast is made possible by Pacific Companies, your trusted advisor in physician recruitment. I am your host, Summer Gilbert, and I am the Director of Marketing and Branding here at Pacific Companies. Today on the podcast, we have a very special friend of Pacific Companies, the one and only Kim Collins. Kim is the lead physician recruiter for Anna Arundel Medical Center and Doctors Community Medical Center, all part of Luminous Health. And for my co-hosts, I have two special guests. I have Travis Carlton from our permanent recruitment department and our queen of locum tenens, Miss Brooke Ortiz. So for today's episode, we're going to talk about that important relationship between a physician recruitment firm and a hospital. And luckily, we get both sides of the coin. We have Kim working directly for a hospital, and we have Brooke and Travis working for the recruitment firm. The foundation for success in physician recruitment is a strong partnership. So let's dive behind the scenes and see how that happens. Let's get started. Well, thank you, Kim, for joining us on the Doc Lounge podcast today. Thank you for inviting me. Of course. To get started, Kim, tell us about your background in healthcare and what led you to where you are today. Well, let's see. Do we have a few uh, weeks to go? <laughs> <laughs> right? Or right. summarize the best you can. I started off when, when I was very young, I wanted to become a nurse. And so I started off as a candy striper and then went into um working as a unit secretary, and then I got into working at um, Baxter Healthcare, doing sales and marketing um, with Intercontinental Marketing, and then which was going on now, there was a riff, and I lost my position, and my boss said, you should try to become a physician liaison and recruiter, and I didn't even know what that was. So um, I did some homework on it and I did took some of my skills that I learned in my um, bachelor's and I interviewed and I got the job. And that was in 2001. So I was a deer in headlights and then I became um, known around the um, nation for the American Association of Physician Liaisons, commonly known as Apple. And I was getting more and more involved in physician recruitment. And that's how I came about coming to where I'm at today. That's great. Thank you for sharing. As a lead physician recruiter, you understand that the partnership between the medical center and a recruitment firm is so important. Tell us about your experience working with recruitment firms over the years. Um, it, it appears that the other firms have quite a few different entities, meaning every specialty has someone. Every um, section, if they do both PERM and they do locums, you have your specialty in PERMs, you have your, spe- your, your person for PERMs, you have your person for locums. And so you're getting constant, constant phone calls from different people. Um, and it just didn't see, I, I felt like I was one of many um, clients of theirs. Mm-hmm. And that, that changed once I met Harold. Um, and that, that was a big difference. Not that Harold and I hit it off in the beginning and, you know, all of a sudden he started with me. It was a slow roll, but um, he, he, was, he, was, he was steady. Mm -hmm. And he was actually very um, respectful of my time and understood when I would say, um, no, not interested right now. It was, it started more up almost like you really truly felt like you were a friend. Yeah. And that, that I think was the the big difference that I saw when um, Carol came into into my life into mm-hmm. my professional life so um it, it was it was a breath of fresh air in comparison to no, having to remember 
everyone's different name and specialty and all the other organizations. Yeah, yeah. Well, Harold is hard to forget. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> he definitely makes his impression on people. Yes, yes, <laughs> both in person and when you talk to him on the phone. Yeah, and talk about someone who uh, loves what he does, and you know that makes all the difference. Mm -hmm. Very passionate. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned earlier, a strong partnership between the medical center and the recruitment firm is the foundation for success. So what do you look for when interviewing or choosing a recruitment firm to work with? I look for someone that's going to be honest, um, that's going to deliver on what they promise, and no throwing in um, extra things to where I get the I get a contract and all of a sudden it's costing me more. It, you know, fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, you're done. Yeah. Um, and that I found that to be quite a bit that uh, the bait and switch. Um, I don't like when someone calls me and says, "Oh, we have a candidate for you. Come on, sign with us." And da 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 da. -da. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, you lay dormant for for days and weeks without even getting that supposed candidate. Um, so uh, I I think it's mutual respect um, from both parts. I respect their time and they should respect mine too. Mm -hmm. um, when I don't have an opening, don't, don't be bothering me. Um, and that's the one thing that I like about Pacific is when I have an opening, I only have to call one person. If yeah. it's whether it's locums or if it's perm, I only have to call one person and they'll get me to the right area, let yeah. alone do it for you. Mm -hmm. On the flip side, Brooke and Travis, what do you guys look for in a client to help keep that partnership foundation balanced? Yeah, I'd love to uh, kick this one off. Um, communication and consistency. Uh, and I think that Kim checks those blocks right away. I mean, just even this morning, we, we have been going back and forth with uh, about several different candidates who are in different stages um, of that recruitment process. And so there's a lot of correspondence, whether it's email or phone. Um, and Kim is always on top of it. It's like when we started our, our partnership between PERM um, and in Luminous a couple of months ago, we had, uh, like we always do, we establish a biweekly call um, in the calendar so that, you know, we know to communicate and just kind of touch base, pretty much standard protocol. What well, I, I finally just deleted it off the calendar, mainly because Kim and I um, talk almost every day of the week. So um, I feel like we've established, you know, a really good partnership and it, it is like a friendship, like she said, you know, kind of with Harold. Um, you know, I think we kind of, um, support each other, you know, in a very good way, um, prof professionally and adversely you have clients who, who don't communicate and they cancel or neglect those biweekly meetings. And that success factor is really minimized, um, uh, when clients aren't communicative. So, mm -hmm. Brooke, what can you add from the locum side of things? Yeah, so for me, it would be locums moves very quickly, right? So I think having the same overall objective between our clients and the locum recruiters and setting that foundation in the beginning with our providers is we're trying to fill this need as quick as possible. Kim, Harold, myself, we were all working on the over the weekend to get providers in during their hospitalist need at the beginning of April. Um, I think we had a total of two weeks to get the providers credentialed, oriented, started um, EMR training, and that isn't possible unless a client's willing to work with the team and to work to make it all fit. You know, I like to describe locums as a puzzle piece because you're trying to find that puzzle to mix around on how we can make this work. If we have a client that is 
willing to pick up the phone, interview, get their medical staff to interview our physicians over the weekends as well, that becomes a great partnership. Mm -hmm. I, I have to say that that really was very impressive. And to add something to it, I opened up the locums. Um, this was all due to COVID. I opened up that locum search to a, a couple of different other um, companies. And um, we, Pacific and we worked throughout the weekend and come Monday, these locums companies called and I said, oh, we have enough already. And they're like, what? How, you just told us about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess I did. <laughs> but somebody else came in and we worked through the weekends and you know, you didn't call me. I mean, yeah. I answered my phone. We, we had a job to do and we got it done. So um, it, it was, it was really, I, I, I consider it very exciting mm -hmm. during that time. Um, I don't know if our spouses thought that, but <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was really um, a successful relationship. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm pretty excited about continuing it. So Kim, let's continue and talk about locum tenants for a second. I know that there's a lot of health systems and medical centers that are not utilizing locum tenants. How important is locums for your hospitals? We very, very, very rarely ever used locums. It was once in a while. And the one time that I did, it, it blew up in my face. Um, but when, when you need it, you need it. And you need to make sure that you have the partner. So I think even if you don't use it, you really need to build that relationship now. Um, for if and when this ever, whoever thought this was going to happen with COVID. Um, I, if I didn't have had that relationship with Harold, I mean, we weren't working together. And we just had this relationship from meeting him at conferences and our phone calls. Mm -hmm. if, if we didn't have that relationship, I don't know where we would have been um, with the crisis that was um, coming ahead of us. So I think it's important to maintain that friendship, even if you don't have a need at that time. Yeah. So with locum tenens, we understand that there's that immediate need and if we have any hospitals and medical centers listening to this episode, Kim, in your experience, how far in advance should you prepare your search for a locum's physician? And what's the soonest you've ever had to find a replacement? We wanted to place them within two weeks. Okay. At least within two weeks. Um, we, we were getting kind of concerned that if any of our own providers were going to get sick or burnt out, um, that we wanted to make sure that we had quality providers in place to um, help us through the crisis. And um, I have to say, when we were doing the interviews, which I, I actually sat in on all the interviews, we did Zoom interviews with every one of the candidates. They had me in tears at times when they were describing some of the um, patients that they were working with. But it was, um, it was impressive to watch all the physicians on our side, along with the candidates, interview and push through to get them trained and get them at, put in the door in less than 10 days. Um, mm -hmm. It was highly impressive. And you can't, one person doesn't do it. Um, Harold didn't do it. I didn't do it. Brooke didn't do it. It was a team that did it. Um, yep. it. You know, you have your medical staff, you have your own, you know, Pacific has their credentialing team that was great that worked with our credentialing team. Um, it, 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 you know, they say it takes a village. This took a, 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 a nation to um, get it together and it, it happened. It was mm -hmm. great. Um, again, I hope it never has to happen again, but it was nice to have someone to partner with that um, helped it go along very smoothly. Mm -hmm. And smart for you guys to take that risk to, you know, try and see what's out there for locums, because I feel like most hospitals might 
just, you know, lose money and, and just wait till they find a permanent provider, which can take months and months. Yep. And that you're absolutely correct. Um, but you have to look at, and we, this is what we do is we, you have to look at continuity of care, but you have to look to make sure your community is being cared for. Um, you, nobody has a crystal ball, but you have to be prepared. Mm -hmm. And um, that's what I commend my organization for that they remain, you know, prepared and always thinking ahead of what our needs would be. And when I received the phone call from um, my administration to um, open up the door to locums, I knew that this was going to be something that was going to be very much needed. And I needed to make sure that I had a partner that would um, help me succeed in this, mm -hmm. which let me tell you, my first words to um, Harold was don't let me down. Yeah. And he didn't. Yeah, he didn't. Well, I think too, Kim, that allowed, you know, you trusted us so much to fill the hospital list. Uh, for your yep. community and then when you guys had another need with the intensivist all, our whole locum team was like okay it's game time we know we're gonna have to fill these I think some providers we ended up filling within three days right dates came up yep. and you know we had a whole bunch ready to go we still do so they're ready to go if this hopefully it doesn't need to happen but at least we have trusting providers that we know will be able to work. And what's nice about it is the, that it's not, um, a lot of the other locums companies have it to where um, you feel like you're being held captive, that if you don't use their provider, you're gonna have to pay and all that. It, it's, I, again, I keep saying partnership, um, but it's like we're in it together. You know, that's a big slogan this year. And um, I really feel that we're in it together. Um, there, there is mutual respect and a partnership that um, I think is something that I have not seen in my many years of recruitment. Um, and, I, you know, part of me, I have never really had to use a lot of locums but I'm happy that I was able to um, meet Harold the many times that I did and that um, he stuck in my mind and that we were able to make it happen. Yeah. And it's not like Harold just, okay, here's your need, passes you on to Travis and Brooke and yeah, see you later. He's, he's always checking in too, to see how things are going. Um, he, he calls me, at least every Friday to wish me a good weekend, probably to find out if we have any locums needs because he's ready to work on the weekends. But um, he, I, he, he genuinely cares, I believe. Um, I almost feel like he's, he's, he's somebody that if, if I'm taking a vacation day, I got to let him know because I don't want to yeah. worry. <laughs> That's so funny. So Travis, I want to circle back with PERM. So I know we're talking a lot about locums and just because it's permanent doesn't mean that we don't have a sense of urgency behind finding that physician. Um, what do you do to, to try and find a permanent uh, physician as soon as possible? Well, Dad, um, you know, we're not just looking to um, send CVs over. You know, we're looking for people who are going to be um, you know, taking care of the people in their community. Uh, and so I always take that into consideration. Um, you know, finding the right fit isn't just, you know, sending over a CV and hoping that they, they interview well. So, um, you know, what Kim may or may not know is that we do a lot of stuff behind the scenes as a team here at Pacific Companies with, uh, you know, our directors and our executives is we do a lot of prep on the back end with candidates, whether it's, uh, pre-interviews and um, hopping on Zoom calls with with the, the candidate and their significant other and just making sure, you know, that they're not only the right fit, but we're not wasting our, our clients' time uh, mm -hmm. through the process. And um, Luminous and Anne Arundel and, and Kim have made it um, 
really easy. I mean, this we have candidates who uh, tend to, to to drag their feet for for lack of a better term, and and time really does kill deals. Um, and uh, Kim and I, I mean, we we communicate consistently. Um, you know, candidates aren't left wondering, you know, what's going on with the process. And um, it tends to move candidates through the process much quickly, which I think um, makes the, the overall process more successful. Um, Kim's just really on it. And um, going back to the, to the communication thing, I just think it's one of the, I don't know how I was so lucky to have Anne Arundel account fall on my lap, but I'm, I'm really glad that it happened. And I'm, I'm glad to, to be a part of bringing oncologists, which is such an important specialty to the community uh, there in Annapolis. Travis, how do you balance the communication aspect of everything? Because I know you are emailing and calling physicians all day long. And so remembering to have that open communication with your client is so important. And, you know, from this, what I'm hearing from Kim, it sounds like you guys have excellent communication. How do you manage that? Yeah, it can be a challenge. I mean, you know, a lot of times we have multiple emails going back and forth that need to be answered and, um, you know, t- uh, prioritizing and, and being able to manage daily tasks is, is part of our part of our job. And it's one of the things that we focus on, whether it's training um, in our support system here at Pacific Companies, we're able to go get help if you need help with time management, if you need help. Um, you know, whatever the case may be, we have a great support system. Our, our, our culture here at Pacific Companies is just uh, so much better than, than other places that I've seen. So, um, yeah, it can be a challenge, but that's part of the that's part of recruiting. Uh, it's not easy. You know, it's a it's a it's a really is like a war for talent. You know, you have to be on your game. You have to be responsive. You have to be able to balance those things. And so you just got to find a system that works for you. Uh, there's not one system that works for everybody. It's, it's, it's all, you know, individual to how people uh, deal with certain, um, you know, tasks. Yeah. yeah. And for me, it's more, so locums is a whole different world. Um, I think that's the best way to put it. But for me wise, it's the number one priority is always the client. Right. So taking care of the clients, responding to their emails, whether it's saying, let me check into this, I will get back to you. So then they at least know you saw their email. Um, And also going back into our candidate. So the way I prioritize my day and how I run my book of business is based off of the biggest need. So and how quickly this health system needs the candidate there because not only are we getting CV and presentations over to the client, we're working on setting up phone interviews, potential travel, getting confirmation letters out to the clients and contractors, right? So there's a lot of moving parts before that candidate even starts that we need to make sure we're all in line. So for me, it's just organization is your best friend when it comes to each folder and each candidate where the job's moving and how to really make it work best for the clients. But for me wise, when it comes to calling the clients, I know I have certain clients, like for instance, Kim, I can call her. She's calling me back within the hour usually, or I'll get an email from her saying, Hey, I'm in a meeting. I'll call you back right after. Right. That allows me to be able to know because of the good relationship that we have, I can know that she's going to get back to me with a sense of urgency, just like I'm going to, which allows that partnership to run so smoothly because there's such great communication. Yeah. And what about you, Kim, for any hospitals listening? How do you manage that communication piece? Well, some people think I'm organized. (laughs) (laughs) I don't, you know, in physician recruitment, you, you come in thinking that your day is planned and then all hell breaks loose. So um, I use a database. I um, have notes that I write um, that I, I have to like 
when I really have to follow something. But again, it's having good partnership with whomever you're working with. And even with my teammate, Marcia, we kind of bounce stuff off of each other to make sure that if, if I'm having a bad day and my day is pretty busy, um, I, I'll just call her and ask her if she can help out on something. Um, physician recruitment is not, um, you make it look easy. And a lot of people think it's, you know, doing tours and, you know, giving out little gifts to people, but there's so much else that goes um, beyond it. But you try to make it be as calm and as um, inviting as possible, because when the phone rings or you get an email, you can't have an attitude of that I'm busy. The one thing that I have to say about um, Brooke and Travis I, I really think, am I your only client? Because I <laughs> yeah. feel that I am it, and they're, they're working for me. Um, I have to, when, when Travis was talking about all the background that you do, I have to tell you, I um, gave a CV of um, a candidate to our VP, and she was like, this didn't come from Pacific. She could tell that it didn't have the in-depth interview that you guys all do down to, um, I mean, you, you guys get down to the nitty gritty to the point where there are times that I don't even have to pre-vet them because it's already been done. Um, that to me is a way of getting very organized, especially when you have such a hot project to get done. Um, you know, you're only, you're, they're, they're only working on one specialty you might have 12 other specialties you're working on. So knowing that you have that partner working on that specialty gives you that opportunity to stay, stay organized. Um, I try to keep my inbox as zero as possible. Um, I didn't do that in the beginning, but when I first got into position recruitment, I tried a different way of organizing. And as Travis said, what works for you works for you. Um, and if it's working, don't, don't, don't try to fix it. Mm -hmm. We're almost out of time. And I really like this podcast because you really get to understand the behind the scenes of the recruitment firm, Hospital Synergy. So for a closing question, Kim, what advice would you give to a hospital, medical center, health system, anyone that is looking to team up with a physician recruitment firm? What advice would you give them? Find a one-stop shop. Um, it will take all your headaches away. Um, I recently had to put the kibosh on one that I was getting phone calls. I do not, don't, don't circumvent around me. Do not go. If, if I say no, don't go higher. Don't go to the admin, you know, the, the administrative team and say, oh, we have this great candidate. You do that, you will never be working with me. Um, I am physician recruitment. This is, this is my wheelhouse. I know what's going on. Don't circumvent and go around me. If you go around, not a good thing. So you need to find someone that understands that. You need to find an organization that really appreciates your time because your time is very important. And I, 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 I have said this before to um, Harold and I said it to his face. You know that when I say, Harold, back off, I'm, you know, we're good. He, he does. And it's not being mean, but there are other organizations out there that I call them gnats. They constantly, constantly, we keep calling to the point that I even put uh, do not answer on some of my phones now, or I know what phone number they're calling from, area code. That, that's really, that's a bad reputation to yeah. have. So I think people need to look, if they want to manage their time, you need to look for a partner that appreciates your time. Yeah. And that would be a one-stop shop. And I, I know many other people feel that way. Um, 
it, it really is very important. It, it takes the headache out of physician recruitment. Now, there's many more headaches, but it mm-hmm. takes the one big headache out. Well, in physician recruitment, it's not like you're hiring someone for a tech company or you need a receptionist. There's a lot that goes into hiring a doctor. Well, you have to also, you have to look at personalities because you know what your organization's, you know, culture is and you have to make sure it's a good fit. And that's one thing. um, When we were doing the perm, um, Travis, we did a phone call with the whole whole team, which I think was pretty good um, Mm -hmm. so that he could get, because there were no fly-ins. He could, nobody could fly in and see our organization. Um, So we had to paint him a picture with words and with our own personalities so um, we, we we tried to do that um, and I think it worked because I think we got some excellent candidates and yeah. the, the funny thing is Travis and I both get sad if someone doesn't work out it's we can't take it personally but we both feel the pain together which that's absolutely a absolutely that's a partnership it's like, yeah. why, why don't they want to come yeah. here? And then he'll say, why don't you guys want them? So, you, you know, you, you kind of learn off each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you so much again. And Travis and Brooke, too. Um, you guys uh, taking your time to do the podcast. You're actually our first client. We usually talk to physicians. Um, and so you're first client on the podcast. Thank you. I feel special. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Okay, guys. Well, yeah, get back to work. You got doctors to find. Thanks, Kim. Have a good one. Bye, guys. Bless you, guys. Stay Bye. safe. Bye. Bye. Thank you to all our listeners. If you'd like to be notified when new episodes air, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And a big thank you to Pacific Companies. Without you guys, this podcast could not be possible. If you would like to be a guest, go to www.pacificcompanies.com. Thank you.